Hello everyone and welcome to another Tips and Tricks video. My name is Dan Lopez and I am the Technical Manager for MIS at Trimble. Uh, this time we're going to talk about a new tool that was recently released on Tecla Power Fab 2023. Okay, now let's take a look to the piece tracking timer in Power Fab Go 2023. This tool should simplify and make more truthful the time records that are input when doing piece tracking. For the first scenario, we are going to this production control job in PowerFab Go and go to the cut list areas. This is the first area where you can actually utilize the timer in PowerFab Go. Uh, as you can see here in this particular bar, I have a, a clock that it was already started and it's been running for a, for a little bit now. So you can obviously stop the, the timer from here. Uh, then you can resume when, when you start, like for example, if you have to stop for some reason the cutting uh, because you need to change the bandsaw or something like that, you, you can stop this. Then when you restart the process, you can always retake it. Uh, when I go to the process screen, is where you can see actually here that the, the time gets transferred to the piece tracking area. So either when you click cut it, uh, it will just save it, or even if you click the stop here, it will just save what you have until that moment. As you can see, uh, the minutes a space and the hours of space will be filled automatically as the clock keeps advancing. So when I click cut it, those 41 minutes are the ones that will be transferred for that assembly. Uh, you can, you know, if, if for some reason, let's say you start this clock and then you are basically running at the same time another piece in, in, a, in a separate area or something like that, uh, you can obviously start more than one clock. That's not an impediment. They can be all uh, started and it, it's not a problem at all. They, they run on their own. Uh, in a different scenario, though, when you go to piece tracking, there are two different options to, to run the timers in there. So let's take a look. When I go to production tracking, there are a couple of options to be utilized. It just depends on how your company utilizes PowerFab Go. Uh, in a scenario where you have every worker with a tablet or a device reporting what they do, for example, and they probably must for sure use the individual add button. Uh, if I go here as an example to layout feed up and click in the add, you can see that these also have a, a clock in here. So you, the, all you need to do is find the piece that you are going to be working on. For example, this A8 A8 and start the clock, and this just keeps going. You can obviously, you know, leave it running. Go, for example, uh, to the drawings, find the drawing, up, or find the, the piece in the model, anything that you need of that matter and then go back to production tracking when you need to go to the layout feed up again find the 88 which is the piece that i selected before and that clock will be still uh, running in the same cadence that we selected before so what i what i, what I attempt to say with this is it doesn't really matter you can keep navigating and just leave the the clock running and it will not go away the other thing that matters is you can stop this uh, maybe go lunch or maybe go for the weekend to home when you come back even if you log off out of the out of the system which is the most logical thing to do when you come back and and, and monday and open power fab go again in the same device and go to resume the clock it will have the remaining piece for that piece as well the the the, the clock will be exactly where you left it before leaving friday so it's it's a very cool thing i think it can really help you to to have a more accurate measure in how things are completed and it's not anymore a guess when you are you know doing the piece tracking uh, input into the screen so as you can see as, as this goes to one minute though the time that this is recording is just getting feed automatically into the screen so uh, i have i think one of these pieces with a clock already started i think i left one of those before yeah for example you can see b45 here four minutes that's already keep running so when i'm done with this right which obviously four minutes is too too, too little bit but just to give you an example I can go and you simply stop the clock, fill the quantity in, and then when I hit add, those four minutes get reported into the piece tracking time. Very simple mechanism. We don't want this to be complex because we want people to be able to use it in a, in a very reliable way. Uh, now, if we go to the batch insert screen, let me go here to the layout feed up a station. You can see here that I have already a couple of clocks already started here. I am using what we call the part timer, and I'll explain the difference here in a minute, right? But basically what it is, is, is I have three parts running. You can see that the time is different, and that's because you can. it doesn't have to be necessarily at the same time, right? I can start a, a, 
uh, clock in any time, really. Like, this can be running if this is the format, even if he's just starting the piece. When someone starts that, it's completely valuable, right? And in, in that way, it's also make it more, in my mind, more accurate than if you go with the bad chancer, but that's just my personal view. It's it's still, we're, we're trying to give you different options for that. Uh, but the same, right before, uh, the same as in the individual screen, as the minutes goes by, the minutes are being reported. So uh, when the moment comes and I go and say, oh yeah, out of these three, I actually finished two of those. Um, it, it goes and says that it's two minutes and then I simply go and update that and those pieces are gone and the other clubs just keep running. Okay, so the good thing about this, as I've been trying to mention several times, is they don't go away. Even if you uh, lock off for the weekend and then come back home, uh, just remember to, to, to make sure that you stop it, right? Because otherwise when you come back, you have plenty of hours in there. Uh, but if this is still running, I can even, you know, lock off of the system or refresh the website, right? I can just refresh the website as, as I'm doing it here. And then when I go back to the station, to the Add Badge screen, I, it takes a second, but you can see here that uh, if I scroll down, the clocks are still running in there. So it's it's very practical. When I'm ready, I can be just reporting the pieces as I am completing them. This is done and that it will report the 30 minutes, right? And the other pieces keep running. So I think this is one of the most practical ways to utilize the timers, uh, but I'll let this up to you. Uh, in, in a separate scenario, but very similar is the batch timer, right? Because uh, basically if I go, for example, and show you here on, on quality control, uh, I have the batch timer here on top. I can click start and that will start the, the time or I can just use the part-timers instead, as I mentioned, right? So it's either one or the other. Now, to give you a better scenario on the batch timer, uh, I have here a separate session where I, I've been running the clock for a little bit. Uh, so I already at this point have nine minutes on the on the batch timer. I could at any point of time just go and say, all right, so out of these eight, uh, we're finishing two. And as you can see, that just goes and say, all right, it will be 10 minutes for those two. And then, but it's also one of these, so it started dividing equally the time between the pieces that you select, right? So when you uh, refresh, that's the time that it will go into those. So I will usually recommend to stop then, update, and those pieces are gone with the time that you reported based on the batch timer. I think this will be a, something that can help greatly to fabricators to have a more accurate time. Uh, so hopefully you like this. That will be all for today. So as always, thank you so much for watching.